I'm going to start this uh, pen cast over again here. Uh, what I had written here was that for number two, I'm referring here to the price elasticity of demand, which I will use as a shorthand uh, term E subscript D. So it's not ed, it's E subscript D. And the general equation for this is going to be the percentage change in the quantity demanded. over the percentage change in the price of the product. This equation is a little bit easier. Uh, if you can read through the writing here at the top that I crossed out and started the pen cast over again, sometimes you'll see it where this is reversed and then multiplied. Um, it's multiplied so that you get the inverse. Uh, let's not make it more complicated than it needs to be. Um, let's just leave it like this. Um, Percentage change in the quantity demanded over the percentage change in the price of the product. Now, we know from the law of demand we know from the law of demand that this will always be what? This will always be negative. Always, always, always. It'll always be negative because price and quantity demanded move in the opposing direction. Now, you may sometimes see that um, we refer to this in absolute value terms. When we write a number like negative 3, an alternative way to do it would be calling it 3 in absolute value sign. The absolute value sign is telling us our distance from 0. Now, just as a brief review that will be applicable to all the other elasticities that we calculated here, to calculate percentage change, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Uh, there are apps for your phone that you can download to calculate percentage changes. There <coughs> are functions in your um, calculators that can solve this kind of thing. Um, you can use the midpoint method, um, which you might find on the web or in certain books. Um, a slightly easier one here would be, um, and the one that I tend to use, um, would be taking the newest number, subtracting the older number, dividing it by the older number, and multiplying it by 100. So for instance, if I had a set of numbers that went to 100 to 110, it should be pretty obvious that that's a 10% increase. But to prove to you that, that that's actually the case, I could have 110 minus 100 over 100 times 100. And that would equal 10%. <coughs> I like this method. It works pretty well. Um, you may find it useful. So, um, what makes something um, elastic versus inelastic? Um, what we see here is that um, when we call something elastic, what we're seeing is that it is very sensitive. meaning that the percentage change in the quantity demanded is greater than the percentage change in the price. So basically, kind of read it this way. If I change the price by 1%, the quantity demanded is going to change by greater than 1%. That would mean that right, I get a pretty big decrease in the quantity demanded uh, because the consumer is so sensitive to the price being charged. When we call something inelastic, it's not as sensitive. Here we're saying that the percentage change in the quantity demanded is something less than the percentage change in the price of the product. Now, one of the questions that you might obviously have is, what is it that makes something um, elastic versus not elastic.
One of the largest determinants of elasticity, what makes it elastic versus inelastic, is the number of substitutes available. Um, you know, for me, um, for my cell phone, because I like to use my Apple, uh, you know, my iPhone, I'm pretty insensitive to the price. I'm pretty inelastic. I don't know, just because I've always used it, and I'm pretty used to it, and I would be unlikely to change, just as some of you might be like that with your Samsung or your Android phone. Um, the companies know this, so they're able to charge prices in relation to that. Yeah, there's people that switch every year between the two, um, you know, uh, operating systems, but most people just stick with one, and they don't tend to switch very often. Same with, like, those who use a PC versus those who use a Mac. Um, basically, what we see is that the fewer the substitutes, fewer the number of substitutes, means it's going to be, it's going to tend to be more inelastic. A second determinant is how big a portion of your budget does it consume? The larger the portion of the budget, the more elastic you are, right? And you can, for all these, you could just do a reverse, right? More substitutes means you're more elastic. Smaller portion of the budget, you're, um, you tend to be a little bit more inelastic. So in terms of, you know, if you think about all the things that you um, spend money on every month, um, right, rent is usually the thing I know pretty, pretty well, right? Because that's a big chunk of my income. But, Right. Um, I also buy candy. Right. I buy candy yeah, at least every week. Right. A dollar, dollar and a half. I don't know. You know, it gives you a little joy in life. Now, the portion of my budget that I spend on candy is incredibly small. So if it went up 10 percent from a dollar to a dollar ten, you know, it's a, uh, it's a very small fraction of my total income. So I'm not going to tend to really change things around. But if my uh, rent goes up by 10 percent. I might consider moving then, um, right? And so the larger the portion of the budget, the more I'm aware of what's going on. And then what we're looking at here is, is the good a necessity or is it a luxury? If it's a luxury, you'll tend to be elastic. Um, I have to buy water, right? I can switch brands, or I could even use what's out of the faucet, but <coughs> pretty much have to buy water. I have to buy rice, right? I have to buy certain things, and I can't really get around it. Um, but I can adjust some of the things that are within my... Um, um, <coughs> I can adjust what kind of car I drive, right? I need a car, but, you know, even if it's a necessity, it doesn't mean that I'm never going to change uh, how much I buy or uh, what I tend to do. And then another reason would be, how long is the time period? You tend to be more elastic the longer the time period. Essentially because you have more time to adjust. Um, whereas you're inelastic in a very short uh, time period because you might not feel you are able to uh, change how you're doing things. So, now we need to look at how does the elasticity look along the demand curve. So if I draw out a demand curve here, 
let's make it for computers. Then, in my demand curve here, um, what we what we want to do here is we want to have um, right. We want to have something that is going to show us what's going on in the middle point, on the upper portion, and on the lower portion. In the exact middle point of the demand curve, this is what we're going to call unitary elasticity. And in this case here, um, the elasticity of demand is equal to negative 1. That means that there's a 1% change in the quantity demanded, 1% change in the price. On the upper portion of the graph, here we're going to see elastic, um, elastic demand. This would mean that the elasticity demand is greater than 1 in absolute value terms. Alternatively, you could say that the elasticity demand is less than negative 1. <coughs> These two are interchangeable. And then over here, it would be inelastic. And for this kind of thing here, um, my in, uh, elasticity of demand is less than 1, but greater than 0. Or, alternatively, my elasticity of demand um, here is greater than negative 1, but less than 0. Again, these would both be interchangeable. The y-intercept would be negative infinity. The x-intercept would be 0. So along the demand curve, the elasticity changes. And it changes from negative infinity, or infinity in absolute value terms, to 0. Um, uh, it changes to 0 um, on the inelastic uh, side where um, you would see no change in the quantity demanded for um, changes in the price. Now, um, if these are our cases for um, the demand along the demand curve, we also need to look at the more polar cases of elasticity. Basically, what if I draw a demand curve that looks like this? This is what we're going to call perfect elasticity. This is called perfect elasticity because even just a small change in the price causes an infinite change um, in the quantity demanded. Alternatively, it could be perfectly inelastic. And if I was perfectly inelastic, um, it would uh, be completely vertical, where you could change the price infinitely, and it would cause no change in the quantity demanded. Now, the other thing that you can um, say along these curves is that, um, you know, as, as we kind of take this a little bit further here, um, that if I were to have two demand curves that intersected each other, let's say something like this and something like this. Now you can only do this kind of discussion if you um, have them intersecting with each other. What we can see here is that D2 is steeper than D1. D2 is more inelastic than D1. But if I just showed you only D2 and you had no other demand curve that was intersecting it, you would have no idea how whether it was more inelastic than anything else. Because slope of the curve 
is not elasticity. Elasticity and slope are different things. How do we know that? Because this line is a straight line. That means that the slope is constant. Yet, as we just showed on the previous page, the elasticity changes along the curve. Let's look at how a kind of a sample calculation for this kind of thing would look. What if I said that the price increases from $10 to $15 and that the quantity demanded falls from $80 to $60. So with this kind of sample equation here, what we need to do is calculate uh, both of the percentage changes. So the percentage change in the quantity demanded would look like new, sorry, um, new minus old over old times 100. Right, so now I have negative 20 over 80 times 100. And so basically what we're seeing here is a fall of 25%. And as for my change in the price, again, again, these numbers should be pretty obvious. Um, I'm just trying to um, show all the math that's possible here. Um, $15 new minus old over old times 100. And that would give me 5 over 10 times 100, which would be 50%. So if we apply that then to um, our uh, equation for the elasticity of demand, what we would see here is that for the quantity demanded changing of 25%, when the price changed 50%, that this would equal negative one half, and that this would be an elastic, given that number. Makes sense. I changed the price by 50%, and I only lost 25% of my customers. That's a pretty inelastic story.